work it's shown, but we could maybe even have it over two days if we have that many artists. That way, uh, you know, it could be spread out a little bit and it would also kind of contribute to the feel of open studios a little bit. And people would be able to um, give feedback in real time virtually. Yeah, I really miss that, you know, like getting feedback from people. It's just, you know, I'm in my studio, I keep making stuff. I don't even know what I'm making anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, David, you? Okay. The, um, <clears throat> the holiday boutique uh, was formatted in a way where you could uh, have a memo, A, so you could leave messages about a piece. And also it had a calendar when you'd be free to talk to people and it had a scheduling feature, which both features would work very well, I think, with the um, open studio. That would be a question of whether Jim, who created those programs, would be available to help Or something us. similar to it, just that you could see that David's, David's going to be sitting in a studio from, well, I don't know why you wouldn't be available all open studio weekend, but let's right. say he's not. <laughs> um, David will be sitting in his studio from two to three. If you want to join in chat, he's going to show his newest opals, log in and see something. Or... I would love to see if we were doing it during open studios is that we would have like a time when you could talk to the different artists right. over the days. A schedule for each artist would be nice. And then you'd know, you know, we're having open studios this whole weekend, but on Saturday from one to two is going to be these two artists featured. And on from two to three, it'll be these two. So you could schedule to we go and see each one. So that's a good idea. Minute slots. <laughs> what? That could go, we might have to have 15 minute slots so we could go over. Normally yeah. we have close to 100 artists for open studios. Yeah, 15 minutes is a lot. Yeah. It is because yeah. I think the group feedback is really good as a, I mean, selling art is really good, but that's not my thing. I like to get reactions from people yeah. and, you know, see what happens to their brains and stuff like that. As right. opposed so to I, wanting I to think we're something. talking about two different things. I think um, the feedback, having a way to, to have different people talk to you, we can do, if we do a more show and have a reception, we can accomplish that, right? Well, um, we could also use the, the you could also use the members only Facebook group for that to some degree too. Yes, so you, you could. can post different things and people can comment and- Yes, uh, we could, because Elisa does post different people's work and people could comment. But the other thing is that we're talking about what we could do virtually for open studios. Right. Yeah. So those are really two different things. I think we can learn from this March event. I think having times for people to be scheduled, for people to meet different artists, because then it's either other members giving feedback or the general public, whoever finds um, mm -hmm. right. our post. Well, well, that's good. Could you describe what you had in mind for March again? Maybe I missed it. I think we're talking about potentially doing another virtual show like we did like the one that's currently up um, and being able to, and then having a virtual reception for that where we all can comment on each other's work to the extent that people want to do that. And we can do as Beth suggested that you did at, in Tompkins Corner, meet the artists, feature different artists who were in the show. Well, I think we only had about eight or 10 and we had to narrow it down to five minute slots oh. for, for an hour and a half. Right. And, uh, it and worked though, it worked. It worked yeah. really well. We, and it was we timed. Left, we left a question and answer at the end, um, five minutes to describe your work, boom, boom, boom. And then back to uh, open discussion. And yeah, I think as you know, Maureen, we never know uh, prospectively how many people will apply to be in a show. So if it's 30 again, then we would have to do more than one of those sessions. That's what I'm saying. It's, that's, it's enormous. It's an enormous thing. <laughs> but, you know, some people may choose, may not want to do that. Some of the artists may not want to be featured. And the have to talk to people. 
really simple to do is for every piece that is posted or every artist that participates in February, you could put their email address <laughs> for comments and feedback. Well, the nice thing though about a group is that the group has, they get into it together. You know, it's not just like having feed, an email feedback for one person. You know, it's like one person comes up with an idea and then another one, and before you know it, there's some ideas flying, you know, as opposed to just, how do you like my work? Uh, I don't know, it's just Does one that dimensional. During an opening is my question. Could you, could we set up a Zoom with, um, with breakout groups? So if they showed oh, a piece great. and that, yeah, if we showed one of yours or so, you know, somebody's piece, then a group could break off and have a conversation for as long as they want. And the rest of the group would stay watching the rest of the show. And you'd kind of like open studios. You move from one to the next. You have conversations with different people. You move in out of groups. I don't, I think that's a feature we don't use very much. And would right. help that's a great idea. Breakout groups. Is that easy te technologically speaking? Technically speaking? I think it is. It's part of the Zoom features. I know we use them for our meetings for the our quilt guild, and she just randomly sorts people. It, the program just randomly so, can randomly sort people yeah. into breakout groups. But I think um, it's something we can try to figure out. Um, you know, we have a PAA Zoom account, so um, that's how we're here tonight, right? Um, so we can try to figure out how to do that. Do you want to do all this for the March thing or for the for June? Well, do we want to do a show of hands for how many people would favor doing a March show? I do a March show. Yeah. So what do we have there? It's hard to clear, clear majority. It looks like a majority to me. March okay. is pretty soon though. And does anyone besides Christine want to volunteer to help work on that, figure out how to do it? We're gonna get guidance. I, will help. I need every oh. every bit of guidance, okay. Lawrence. If I was to help, I oh, of course I'll be. Not know of course I'll help. Of course I will help. There we go. Anyway, you, I will help. <laughs> I'm the one who knows how to post the images on the website. That, I, was, <laughs> I, I was just about to say uh, we need a volunteer who really knows how to do. Uh, what's the program you use, Robin? Was it uh, WordPress? WordPress. What is WordPress. What? We really need someone to know how to put images on WordPress. Yeah. Well, it, it's not on WordPress. It's on it's, the gallery view. <laughs> it's in the, no, it's actually, it's WordPress, but it's the WP Bakery page. That's it's the editor the you use. It's gallery, which I use. <laughs> hmm. you know anyway, what? Okay, so we're good. So I, um, I would say, I would say that here's my feeling. If I will help as much as I can, but my helping might be uh, learning this time mm -hmm. more than actually hands-on because I'm not that good at technology, but if but I learn it- then then good at looking at the art to help put together the show. Yeah, I, I will help any way I can, but I would love to learn. I'm open okay. to learning. Good. And okay. I'll help, I'll help with whatever technology. Of course. <laughs> so Lawrence? So we should, um, uh, I will uh, offline uh, email the one, two, Three, the four of you, and we'll figure out a time we can get together. Yeah, put me in the emails too, please. I was assuming you're part of the email. Right. Of course you are. Okay, uh, I, got, I have I've a got... question for Lawrence. Okay, ask away. Um, when you send out the email, uh, because you were talking about the sizes were off and so forth, will you specify what you need? Absolutely. Because Sometimes I, there, there are shows and they're not clear at all about exactly, you know, what's required. Oh, no problem. Are they better oh. when they're square? Oh, if they're square, that's, uh, that's, it's a whole lot easier if they're square. Not every piece But not square, every no. person makes things. Well, I understand that, square. but I'm just saying. Make, what if, if it's not square, you could just put. Well, we, we use rectangles. Top and bottom. We, we, use, we use rectangles and squares. Those, those are usually I usually best. have a friend do it because I, I have no idea how to resize things. So no, you don't we, even we, have to resize it. You just put it, put your rectangular. Doesn't work that way. A square frame. <laughs> I'm telling you, 
I yeah. I tend to get cropped, and because I'm doing those tall figures, oh, the crop is the belly, or the belly and crotch. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so it's not only it's not only the size of it; it's the number of pixels because you have to have it with a certain amount of pixels so that it shows up well on the internet. So that's what I'm saying, that, that if you we'll, could specify, that would we'll be helpful. We'll get some information to you. We'll, we'll be a little bit more specific as we, get, as we send the mm -hmm. perspectives out. Right. Hillary, so, you're trying to I, talk your... Hillary, I'm unmuting. This is an app called, um, what is it called? <laughs> oh, I already... <laughs> <laughs> it's called White Border. And it's really easy to use. And it will put a white border around anything. And then you could make this a square. You know, it would be framed out like that. Is that easier for you, Lawrence, if you receive things that are bordered to that make would, them a square? Yes. yes, that would probably be a big assist. Yeah, well, the app is free. You can get it on definitely on um in the i i you know the iPad apps or the iPhone apps. Mm -hmm. And it's it just if you have a picture that's in your phone that you take and crop to the point where you think it looks decent, then you just open the the white border app and it'll flag you to it wants to open your photos mm -hmm. and you allow it to do so. And then you pick the photo and then it just pops up that with a frame around it. And then there's a couple of options you can do about the size of the frame and you mm -hmm. can save it and that's it. There you go. Does it, it's a rectangle? It, it, it'll make it, you, there are settings that you can use, but basically this is becoming a square now, or you can have it get a whiteboard or even if it's a different shape and then crop it into a square using your iPhone software or your phone software. Right, it will be a rectangle on top of the square. So the, the frame will be square, but your piece could yeah. be rectangular. Like this is actually a um, not a perfectly square piece. You notice how the top and the sides are different, different mm -hmm. amounts of white. So it makes it, you know, in this case, it's set to make it into a square, like Instagram format right now with the white borders, but there's other settings as well and it's free. You can try it. What is it called? It's called White Border. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine why. You know, I have a question. Have a, a Does square it... and then put your rectangular piece on the square. Yeah, well, you could just, you know, basically, I'll, I'll show you. I'll use the app. Um, like, here's a couple of pictures. I'm going to pick a picture from my thing, and then it just shows up like that. Uh, and then you can save it. What? <laughs> My phone likes weird, gets weird. Uh, but it's it's really very easy. And this is what the app looks like. It's this little one with the stripes down here. No, oh, where the hell is the camera? It's, 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 right. it's right there on the phone. It's really, it's free, it's easy, try it. It's like a pretty much of a no brainer. Just try yeah. it out. If you don't like it, delete it from your phone. Yeah. Well, then I like the but that would make you know that's an easy way to go i it was on a an artist website um an artist that i follow uses it to sort of mat virtually mat her work before she posts it so no brain that too. Use it. Okay. Yeah. That, like no that brain would be, that's okay. excellent for instagram because instagram likes to use square shapes yeah, yeah. and yeah. if you want to show your your work sort of matted or not you know in you know very not filling the whole space but with a nice little border it's white border mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, i think lawrence yeah. we can see you know we can see how that looks on the on the web gallery okay. yeah, yeah. It, it, the border it, square fit photo <laughs> Folks, don't make yourself crazy okay. with yeah. the shape. You want we'll, we'll work with you when the time comes and you're sending your images right. in. But the one thing I will say is um, we should probably move on because we do have yes. a full agenda. But um, if there's something, a, a theme that people have in mind that they think would work for this show, let us know. 
or tell, raise your hand now if you can think of something, but. Uh, just let us know, think about it, let it yeah. germinate. But I also want to say, I think we have a multitude of so many ideas and I thank you. I think it's a, a, an amazing amount of ideas. Thank you. What about the theme of growing things? Oh. Growing things. We'll work out the themes later on. We'll write that down. Next. Possibly. Anything but COVID. How's that? Oh, yes. <laughs> Actually, that's a great title, Anything But. That, is, that, is, that, is that actually might be the theme, Maureen. Oh, right, yeah. right. Or we'll March on. <laughs> How about new beginnings? That's nice, too. Yeah, that's a nice theme. Yeah. Beginning. Outside of these four walls. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm just, I'm, before we move on, I am going to say one thing about the other virtual show we did. Um, and that is that um, the um, holiday boutique was not a rousing success, except for David Moskowitz. Um, but I think, I don't think anyone else sold anything. So I'm not quite sure whether it was the way the site was designed or what exactly, but clearly if we want to use it in the future, we need to try harder and do more, more, uh, promotions. Yeah, there were a lot of, I was getting a lot of visits, um, between the PAA and the Croton. I was getting a lot of visits on my site, but nobody contacted me. And I think there needs to be a tutorial for customers when they show up and say, this is what you can do. Because I think people maybe didn't know what they could do. Right. Maybe. We all knew as, as vendors, because he went through and had all these, but I don't think there was anything on there that said, hey, this is how you navigate the site. Okay. I think that's a good point. Um, it was, I think it was a combination of advertising and there was some hiccups with the link in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So when you want that strong open, that's when we had the problem. Um, I did have people use the email feature. Um, uh, just let me say that I did well, but most of, most of those things, sales were uh, friends and family. Uh, only two people were people I didn't know before the show. Right. Um, but I, I was able to receive, they were brave enough to click and, and send emails. So there were some issues. I did like the format. Like I said, that there was a way for people to comment uh, and there was a schedule feature. So. What was your medium? What was your medium? Uh, I'm, I'm a jeweler. jeweler. A what? A jewelry. Jewelry, aha. Uh -huh. David makes beautiful jewelry. Oh my God. Thank you, Robin. Nice. <laughs> Welcome. Beautiful. Okay. So I think um, the discussion topic we were hoping to chat, have, you know, a chat with everyone about is the topic of how, sorry, Maureen, how has COVID affected your art? <laughs> um, just because we, you know, we've all been living in this. Uh, alternate universe now for 10 months. Mm. And um, it'll be interesting to, to hear. I know some of you have gotten more productive, Will and Christine. Mm. You wanna talk about that? You have to unmute yeah. yourself. Yeah, I had to turn my mic on. Yeah, um, I found a local champion uh, not Christine, uh, awesome, uh, down at Bean Runner, and uh, we kind of bonded. Um, so I've had a show that's been going on since October at the Bean Runner, and uh, she's got a wedding coming up this Saturday. Um, her son, so her son approached her and said, I can't find any other place to have a wedding. Can I have one at the Bean Runner? So of course Drew said, you know, yes. And then Drew called me and said, you've got to take everything down. 
uh, because there's, you know, they have to decorate it for a wedding. And I said, fine. And then she said, put up another show on Monday. So I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I'm having sort of two solo shows back to back at Bean Runner. So That's it's great. Really Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's very fulfilling. Uh, thanks to Drew. Sounds good. I'm going to have to check it out. And you should, um, Will, send the announcement to me or to Elisa so we can share it on social media with people. Will do. I've, I've been sending it on various social media, but I'll send it to the PAA. Um, um, or, or do you have a specific site that I, sh I should be using? Alicia. You I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, Alicia. Alicia. Yeah, right. Powell. Alicia, okay. yeah. That's me. Oh, okay. So, but anyway, we would love to share, um, but um, the communication sometimes is challenging. Um, but um, my art is blossomed in this frame. It's hard to keep up with it, but um, I'm looking forward to. I have a two future shows, and not until 2022, but I. This came out of the Garrison Art Show and uh, my fog of shadow dreams. And I'm working on two solo shows for 2022. Right. Great. I a website and starting an Instagram and kind of getting brave to put it out there because I've been busy making it and not so good at marketing and sharing it. It's very intense and, you know, it's just a lot of process. Mm -hmm. So it's a rich period. Personally. Has anyone worked less because of this time? Because it kind of kind of up and down, you know. I think I get focused. I think some people get down and then and then they're feeling different. I mean it's depending, but I can't Sometimes. get focused on photography. I can't take a picture of a bird. It's crazy. I've been weaving. I've been doing other things. <laughs> yeah, you, but, it's a depressing time, and uh, yeah, and it's 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 hard to look back at pictures and not see a face. You know, like even if I take mostly landscapes and and wildlife, I see people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then, it's a lot of loss. Yeah. I keep seeing hearts and this is, sounds bizarre, like a little girl. I keep seeing hearts and all the trees, you know, all the tree trunks that are like. Oh. <laughs> well, my very favorite color is red. And um, I, I do a lot of work with red. Well, all of a sudden I started noticing um, almost everything in my studio is red. <laughs> and I realized that red is a color that is giving me comfort Ooh. and strength. Hmm. And it is just going beyond uh, points. It's just- You it's need it. Going to a different realm than I had ever energy. done. Energy, energy yeah, and it is. It's motivation. Just, all of a sudden, I, I will take a piece that is not working at all. And the next thing I know, the whole thing is red. <laughs> I say, how did this happen? You know, how did this happen? But at the same time, um, I'm exploring new things. I'm making artist books. Um, to complement what Will said, I had the complete opposite experience. In March of last year, right before the pandemic started, I had a show at the Henry Hudson Library with another artist. It was called Collage Plus. And uh, the pandemic you know, lockdown started two days before the opening. Oh. So this show, I we, we have a joke. Uh, we call it the longest running show that no one ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, we it was up there from March until uh, June. We picked Ooh. it up. I think we picked all the work up in June. Um, so I have something from it. I have a good statement. You know. Right. But, uh, and I have a body of work that no one has seen, so I can put it <laughs> in a new show. <laughs> it's framed and ready to go. That happened, but that happened I, to I, me too. Yeah. And ocean, that, um, ocean too. 
Yeah, I was in a I was in a show at the Viridian Gallery, and then the pandemic came, and you know, she made a whole video of it, and a, you know, digital, and it was up for months. You know, but well, at my gallery in the city, we just got an email. On both of the April artists. <laughs> you whoever sneezes. What the hell? It's a dog. Oh, and oh. From California and Michigan, and just is it worth coming? We're going to put up a show. Very few people are going to see. Yeah, that's a good. And point. and in order to get here, neither one of them would be happy to do anything but drive. But which, which from California is a really long way. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of you who came to my studio visit, you know, one of my things with the pandemic is I ended up having to give up my studio. Yeah. Because I just, I lost most of my income. Yeah. I wasn't comfortable using a studio where I had a shared bathroom. And yeah. it. Yeah, sorry about that, Joanne. Well, it, it, it's all gonna be for the best. If we all survive, that's right. That's the main yeah, thing. Like, guys. <laughs> then we have climate change to deal with. Is I just wanted to ask Renee, the, the gal, the photographer. Uh, Renee, if you're there, I'm here. I'm here. There. I don't see Renee. She's he, right yeah. next to Robin. Is what Depends on what computer you're on. No, oh, he's he's here. Here. He got a bottle of bourbon. You'll see Renee. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, sometimes they're on the next screen because we feel well, I don't know. Maybe she's not uh, not here now. No, no, she is. She's right she here. Is. We're looking at I her. I don't see her, she's but okay. I have a, just had a, an off the track a little bit. Uh, I wondered what kind of uh, camera she uses. It, I'm, I'm, I I'm have a Canon. Nature. I use go. a Canon. Um, a, it's a Rebel a digital? It's just a regular digital camera. Yeah, because I have a small digital, but uh, I don't know, it's not that. I was just looking at these uh, binoculars that are combination camera binoculars. I don't know if they're worth, have you ever I have a that? pair and I don't find them to be worth anything. Oh, really? The, yep. It's not clear, the photos? Or? The photos are terrible. Um, it's <clears throat> difficult to get it to take a still. So you're moving a little bit and the cameras, it's, I found them to be horrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, but you know, some of them yeah. they say are better than others, but I don't know which one you have. But yep, I and don't like that. I don't know. I'm sure the more money you spend, the better the camera it is, and all of those things. But when it comes to me, if I want binoculars, I just take out my big long lens and and shoot through that. I don't bother with you know. A camera is a what, camera. What, binoculars. What was the are name binoculars. of your camera that you hated so much? I love my Rebel T3. No. no the one oh, that... the binoculars? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, okay. You see, right. they might be right here. You can have them. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't worth remembering the name. <laughs> She's ready to give it away. That's not a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> Has anyone found that they're making, they're doing very different things? During I, the... yeah, I oh. did for a while. Uh, I, I was into these animals. I'm really into animals. And I did these uh, sketches, uh, just simple marker, black marker, you know. So I made a whole series of cards. And I, went, and I haven't gotten back to it yet. Maureen, I'm doing something else now, but. Maureen, you had your hand up. Yes. Um, I also have about 50 windows open. <laughs> Uh, there you are. Yeah, I did, I did, uh, let's see, I think I have something on my, if I could do my background screen, you're not gonna believe this. Um, it, to me, I don't know, it seemed kind of silly, but I'm getting really good feedback on it. Choose virtual background. And then I have uh, some stuff on, oh crap, I can't find it. Want to share screen? Uh, no, I can't seem to find it. But um, anyway, 
It's just uh, rocks. Um, oh, I saw that. It's fantastic. Yeah, was that the Rolling Stones? I thought it was Stones? very exciting. I saw it off someplace, and I thought it was very exciting. Was well, that the Rolling I, Stones? No, that's that was a different background. That was no. Mike in there. That was yes. I photoshopped Mike in with the Rolling Stones. Because that was on your screen just a little while ago. Yes, I I love that picture. He he looks so cool and loving and like, what are you up to, Mo? You know. <laughs> so that's on the inside of my front door. Every time I go out, I tell him I'm going out to face the world. And I, every time I come home, I say, I made it. I'm back, honey. And, uh, you know, so COVID came right along with my husband's diagnosis in January of um, 2019, right? 2020. And, uh, 2020. And, um, you know, so my, it's like, you know, my paintbrush and everything just like fell out of my my hand, uh, caregiving and um, all that horrible stuff. So I literally have gone for almost a year without painting a goddamn thing. I'm also sorry to hear that. Maria. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. Thank you. You know, just eight months. Uh, so, um, but, you know, so I got these rocks because not only that, but some people in my family, as one person in my family is just so crazy in the conspiracy theory and all the lies and all the stuff and hammering me, a grieving widow with all this on Facebook. And uh, I, I just wanna lose my mind. So I went to the river and I collected all these rocks and um, uh, what's going to happen is, is um, they're, they're going to have all this negative stuff written on them in chalk. <laughs> uh, underneath it, after I put them in the river, the water is going to wash off um, lies. Wow. And underneath it, it's going to say truth. It's going <laughs> to... Oh, that's no, nice. Yeah, the water like is going to... That's great. It's going to wash off, um, cleansing it, you yeah. know, and, and it'll, it's going to cleanse it and have like compassion underneath, um, um, you know, cruelty and all the things that I, I've just been, it's the, all my beautiful rocks are dirty with this dirty four years of like accumulated hate and, uh, and I, and, and I can't wait to put them in the water and wash, watch the water wash off and have these beautiful words like freedom, you know, and uh, compassion and love. Are you um, gonna videotape it? Videotape yeah, it. It needs to be videotaped. I'm yep. gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I invited a friend to do it. She hasn't moved along with it, but someone mentioned oh. that, you know, you know those um, calming, rock things with the water. You could buy them at Bed Bath & Beyond to just like put the, the you know, get your rock that you want to wash that off and put it in your little water fountain <laughs> thing and be like, oh, yeah. just jump in. The but Maureen, um, make, I, I see an art piece. I seriously. Yeah. Yeah. A, a yeah. performance, yeah. A performance um, piece. Like, happening. Like, Remember happenings? Photo. Yeah. Whatever, capture those moments. I am. I am. Yeah. It's, it's very terrible experience. What you're, a cathartic experience. So yeah, customer. I can. And I uh, and I also am working on watercolors again. Um, with because um, you know, like COVID, not to dominate this whole thing, but you know, uh, uh, the death of my husband, and um. COVID at the same time has smashed down any possible walls of defense uh, and uh, that I ever had. And it allowed me to be open and vulnerable and ask for help. And it seems that my vulnerability and honesty has brought out the most beautiful vulnerability 
and truth and honesty and the deepest kind of love from my friends that I never knew before. I'd come home and say, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> I didn't even know you were so cool, all of you. And um, so I'm working on a whole vulnerability series. Oh, that was hard to say, but um, yeah. And uh, I don't think my art is formatted to um, show you to show you that, uh, but um, there's a they're and then they're nudes, and I'm starting to understand now why I work in nudes, in watercolor. There's something about it, and it's the vulnerability of it. But this one, she's got her throat out, you know, and she's completely nude. And her, she's opening up like this, and the chakras, all the chakras. Well, it's my version, and uh, and gold is coming out, and silver is coming in, and it's just this magnificent thing. If I don't screw it up, the watercolor is beautiful. I start putting all the stuff on it, it's like perfect time to screw it up. But uh, you know, like anybody else would say, leave it alone. <laughs> but I won't, no. <laughs> Thank you for Thanks. sharing all that. But I mean, I think that's um, Maureen's experience. You know, it's not like life's gone on, right? The good and the bad parts of it during COVID. Yeah, so it's- Harder. Like, Harder it, when you can't hug your uh, friend or, you know. You know, I didn't, I haven't worked during most of COVID. The first six weeks or so, I, all I did was work in my studio. And then some of you know, I had a very bad accident last July um, and had uh, shoulder surgery in October. And only about a week ago, week or two ago, was able to start working in my studio again. Baby Congratulations. steps. Congratulations. Congratulations. So I spent most of COVID most of the last, you know, period of time not working at all. Um, thinking about what I might want to work on or not. Um, so that's been an interesting experience, not having something to throw myself into during COVID. I honestly have absolutely no idea what I've been doing since last March. <laughs> Looking back, I can't think of a single thing that I did. <laughs> Just trying, to cope. just trying to cope. I watched a lot of television. Logically, you know. I've been doing a lot of dancing. I dance. Oh, dance? So I've been, you know, I take a jazzercise Zoom class and another ball Zoom ballet class. And then in the, at night, I go to another ballet class. So that one's live. So my <laughs> I've been watching. That helps. Oh, good. Well, I watch Netflix constantly at night after MSNBC. <laughs> what's your favorite? What's television has saved our lives, right? <laughs> what's everybody's favorite uh, binge watch? Wednesday Night Nature on Channel 5. That's sometimes great. There's a great program on Sundays, um, All Creatures, Large and Small. I don't yes, know. it's good. It's wonderful. It's that's Robin Horst. Were you doing your knots before COVID? You're on mute. Unmuting. Uh, no, it actually changed everything. I I work full time and I work a lot and I was never home. <laughs> um, so being home gave me access to my in-house studio. I never painted knots before. I, I painted more outdoor nature things. I kind of turned inward, internal, and I started painting knots, and I just haven't stopped. It's, yeah, well, it's the knots are a really interesting metaphor for this time, so. Mm. It's also, I mean, I mean, I could say this about anything, or I'm sure you can all say this about anything, but it's compel. they are compelling. And it also, it's a way of I figuring things out, you know, it's, it's People are doing puzzles and people, you know, it's it's sort of a way of maybe even controlling what we have. I have no control over anything, right? This the world, there's no control, but my little paintings or my big paintings, um, 
just focusing and at, at some sometimes it actually goes strand by strand. So it's been a, a, a very different, um, it's a, a grim, it's been a really grim time, you know, and um, I think art also is another way to shut out the things that are really going on in the world and give me some moments of uh, freedom. Mm -hmm. I've been really uh -huh. enjoying go, going on to YouTube's about farmers. The farmers talk about the way they make their dirt and the nitrogen and all the things you need in the dirt and, and your compost that I made a compost. And it's just so nice to see someone so excited about doing something practical and wonderful. You know, there's all so much crap out there. You just go on, you can find some fun things on YouTube. True. And, you know? so, so I've been, I'm more of a theater person to the right, direct the goose, act, perform. And I just, I, I went, you know, it's almost like cold turkey. I just stopped writing completely, you know, except for like maybe one little piece. But I kind of turned into my inner childhood and I found every moment to escape the house and play. So <laughs> whether it's me on horseback or out tennis or out hiking or on the boat, you know, I'm just avoiding the world by, by by getting as much as I can from, and, and staying safe, wearing the mask, you know, keeping the distance, washing the hands, taking all the precautions, but, you know, you can't hug people and, and you know, and that, um, you know, and family you can't see and, you know, but I've been, I think, I, I've been coping by being very physical, my other part of me, because, you know, in my past life, I, I taught uh, phys ed, about the phys ed, so I'm kind of in that, and then my house, I could stay indoors for a year and not finish everything that I need to do here, but I always do think about doing physical, like artwork or sculpting or something like that, but it just, take care of your cat, and I can't sit long, long enough. <laughs> And you also take care so, of your yeah. cat. Your, I mean, I, it's, your rescue cat. Absolutely. She's adorable. She's like a dog. You have to explain. I don't <laughs> think they know about I, this. I, what I did, I, I had a cat. It, it's a long story, but to make a long, uh, long story short, I, I um, had this cat that adopted my house, Feral. <laughs> and so I became friends with it gradually by you know putting food by her and getting closer and closer so that she would trust my presence so at this point I could walk her like a dog because she'll follow me up and down the block you know when I come home at night it could be any time at night she comes and she greets me oh. she calls for me <laughs> you know she calls me Mah! and so but the you know and she'll wait by the door I, I can't take her in the house I'm allergic to cats I'm getting shots but that's besides the point so she's got her house as, as a matter of fact, uh, Liz gave me a, a, an outdoor cat house. So she, oh, she goes there good. on the porch and stuff and, you know, she's really good. And I, I've tried teaching her tricks. She knows some <laughs> words. She definitely knows her name. <laughs> and she'll- My and, cat. And, yes. This is my cat, right? <laughs> my cat. Uh, but the, I can but, you know, it, Sorry. No, please. But the, yeah, I mean, the beautiful. So, so yes, you're right. I mean, she's kept the happiness too. You know, and then I, I've also ha had the responsibility because I'm basically the caretaker for my husband who has had to be off his foot for the longest time and and then the adjustment back. And so, um, you know, so that's, I run away and I come back, you know. Um, I'm new to the group. So, um, prior to the, the pandemic, uh, we had an apartment in the city and I was working a lot in the schools with different literacy groups and art groups. And we had a weekend house in Cortland Manor, but we didn't, we came out on the weekend sometimes, but you know, we, we stayed on the reservation, so to speak, because the apartment and the city, and now since the pandemic, we're out here all the time. And I, I never had any place to work in the apartment either. So now I have a room and I have an outdoor where I can use spray paint and I do a lot of found object art and, um, and also just re, um, revisiting peak skill. 
has been amazing for me. Uh, I, I was at the Bean Runner. Will, that I've been to your show twice at the Bean Runner. It's great. I collect um, lots of all that stuff that you have in your stuff. But anyway, so for me, the pandemic actually was like a new beginning because I had sort of stopped doing a lot of work because I was doing work in the schools. But now I'm up here, I'm not working. And um, it, it's been amazing to discover groups like yours and just so much going on up here, so. Great, so welcome. Thank you. Yes, Rashi, welcome. Um, you, Rashi, I know normally this time of year you'd be in Puerto Rico. Uh, not this year. <laughs> So I know, so I'm wondering how not having that your winter in the Caribbean has affected your work this, this year. Uh, my, my work is growing in a direction I sort of suppressed possibly. Uh, I had started Mindscapes years ago, but I never really let loose. And I keep going back to you know, more of a realistic view but now, because I'm in and I can't see things on rotation, I am honing and mining the memories and the visions and doing more of uh, surrealistic mindscapes of peak skill and everything I love about the area. And I've kept very busy with it. So uh, I'm content and considering my age and limitations, you know, I've gotten some good work done this year. Uh, I would like to fly the coop. I would like to get the hell out of here and, and, and do more mining of ideas. But for now, at least uh, using what I had and forgot I had, I've been creative and I'm happy. So it's good hearing everyone's thoughts and what they've been doing. And I'm glad you're back at your work because I know how important it is that we do it. Mm -hmm. Even if you know I'm limited on how much I can do, I do what I can do and, I, and it's keeping me sane, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> um. I've driven by Peekskill and seen the lights on in Larry's place. I want to know what he's doing in there. <laughs> Got to take yourself off mute, Larry. Painting. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. What a surprise. A actually, actually, one of the things I found is, is this whole experience has been so painful that finding a place to have some peace has been the most important thing to me. Yeah. So the work is actually centering and, and really important. So yeah, I've been plugging away. I've been painting a lot um, and I paint them and I just put them away. I don't give a shit. I'm just doing it. <laughs> I want to knock on your door. I see the lights on. <laughs> uh. Well, we can wear masks. <laughs> yeah. we go. Well. Has anyone gotten the vaccination? The yes. Vaccine? Yes. Where and how? I went down to the armory at 168th Street next to Columbia. Oh, wow. you just showed up? No. You made no. a there's a there's a um, a portal called My Connect. Okay. I must have gone on it twenty to thirty times before I found available appointments, but I was persistent. And uh, the day that there were appointments, there were appointments for that day, so we jumped in the car and ran down. Hmm. Uh, Robin, I I looked at that uh, not My Connect, but I looked right at the Armory listing today and they said only for people in New York City. So you oh, that wasn't the case for us. <laughs> no, no, that's also because we have, um, uh, I'm in my connect because I, I have some Columbia doctors. Um, well, I do too, that's mm -hmm. why I saw the site. They sent it to me, mm -hmm. but it still said by your address, it's just for New York people. 
So I didn't change that yesterday, Robin. Changed yesterday. Have you gotten an appointment yet, Karen? No, on the list though. Right aid. Right aid. Right. That's where I'm on the I list in pack at right aid. Right aid in Mayapack? No. Right aid and Pete Skill. Really? And right aid. Right and in save more and also take save more in Croton. Oh, uh, how how yeah, long is the delay? Save more in Croton today. They I won't got, tell you. I got an appointment April fourth okay. at in um, White Plains, but uh, yeah, that's where my appointment was April seventh. That's why I tried something sooner. Um, well, a friend of mine also know. just got her shot on Monday at the Rockland Department of Health. Oh, but Rite Aid is do Rite Aid is doing uh, the vaccine. They don't have yes. appointment. Yeah, they're back. They're backed up now. Sign up on uh, their list. about three months. Oh. Sign up on their website on Rite Aid website. No, go out, go over and sign up. Oh, yeah. so, um, go, in, go into this. Go into the store and ask to have your name put on the list. Right. I'll do it. Okay. It's thank you. In Manhattan, you can call sixty-five and up still. Yes. I'm sorry. Remember what? that little shopping center all near Crossroads? Yeah. I can't do it. You ha you have to go in to do it. Or yeah, call up to be in the morning. Well, you're not old enough, are you? I'm just a baby. You're a baby. <laughs> well, Forget you it. Have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the rate things are going, I'm not getting it until 2022. <laughs> well, but the right aid is at um near the fire station that, yes. that shopping center behind there right yes but you're not going to walk in and get it i no, they're not going to give you the shot you you go in for no, an appointment I understand. yeah they, they, you might get lucky and get an appointment no you no, don't get an appointment, appointment. Yeah. i was there i was the night before and tell you that you can come in the next day right so you're not going to hear for a week or two or three or four depending on where you are on the list in Mayapac at the Rite Aid, you can call them, which I did today. They will put you on the list. Oh, right. Mayapac. What? 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 What will they do? They They'll will put you put on the your list. Name over the phone, which and Rite Aid and Peekskill will not do. That's right. They, they actually did that for me. Oh, did they? Yes, I got on the list that way too. And my neighbor called them just out of the blue and they had a cancellation. They said, can you come on down? And she did. And cool. she got it that right away. I mean, the peak skilled right aid you're talking about. Yes, yes. I, I had a My Connect appointment that I made that morning and got a phone call from Rite Aid in Peekskill and canceled my My Connect appointment and ran into Peekskill and got my, my yeah. shot. I didn't cancel the almost, county center till I till after my shot. <laughs> right. Oh, right, right. Uh, I have one I county center in March. So well, I had to cancel. Um, anyway, but, it's a crazy time. It's a what I was told, and I think it's true, is you have to figure you're going to spend quite a few hours, and you have to check in every day. Yeah. And. You have to be eligible. So you have to be either over 65 or in one of these essential worker categories. Right. Right. Only doing one A and one B in this at that point, at this point in New York State. Right. I think artists are essential. <laughs> <laughs> essential workers. Yeah. 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 On strike and let them know. <laughs> And they have add me in your county your list with the new variants. <laughs> yeah. Well, I been a crazy <laughs> time. Funny. So, does anyone else want to talk about their experience with um, that how COVID's affected their art? I will say that getting back into my studio, even for like little tiny bits of time, has been like heavenly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Today, I actually let myself work for an hour, which actually I had to, I had to ice afterwards. I've had a lot of ice after. I've had a lot of start and stop, you know, throughout the whole pandemic. I was in an exhibit in uh, Yonkers at the Riverside Gallery and Christine and a couple of my friends, we all went together to um, see the opening. And then I think it was the very next night or maybe two nights after it closed. 
And so it's, it's actually, my painting is still there because of the transportation, it's a large one. So it was hard to organize that to get it back. But, um, and then, you know, when it hit, there were a lot of grants to apply for, for Tony and just a lot of panic about unemployment and how to get it and all that. And so I felt um, so jealous when I heard people saying, oh, I'm knitting again. Oh, I'm, I'm eating bonbons. It's, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I have no access to my time at all. And then um, things, you know, things just kept shifting and changing. And uh, for a while I wasn't teaching yoga and all of a sudden I had a little time and um, uh, Carla Ray invited me to do the Arc of the Viral Universe, which is the notebook project. And so um, that was more accessible, right? So I was starting to dig into that and then that became sort of an obsession for a little while. And then, you know, I started teaching again and it's, it's just been a jumble of, um, inconsistency, but I did get a chance to do a couple of portraits, um, both which are now gone. <laughs> you know, I both of them. One was a commission, and one I sold, which was in the show that we did. Um, and I have one on the on the drafting table, ready to start. It's already started, but um, I know what it is. <laughs> Amanda Gorman. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> the woman of the hour. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can see your version of her without even seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a video. I, I found YouTube of her doing the, the poem, and mm -hmm. I, I kept looking for the light that I wanted. And I just kept doing screenshot, screenshot, screenshot until I found the one I wanted. So it's ready to go. Beth, did you do the work that's behind you under your stairwell? I did, actually. I love it. It's wonderful. <laughs> I was looking for um, something to put in my background, and I was digging around through things, and I, I found it. I'm like, oh, wait, this makes me look like I live in a very opulent place. It, it, it does. It's at Versailles. <laughs> it's a house in West Orange that I did many years ago. I did the staircase mural. And a lot of other work for them. <laughs> yes, the first I, I have to just say about Beth. So I knew that Beth and I had a mutual friend. And I guess I kind of knew Beth did decorative painting. But then I was in that friend's house and went into her bathroom and was completely blown away <laughs> that Beth had done that. It was just amazing work. Wonderful. Sometimes I get to go back and see things, but not almost never. <laughs> well, not during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Although I did I actually did get to see her, her boyfriend because he bought her birthday present from me. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Roshi, is that your painting behind you? Uh, yeah, a, a diptych I did years ago. Uh, it's too Beautiful. dark to see it, but thank you. El Faro in Puerto Rico, where I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. Yeah, kind of yeah. like next year in Jerusalem, next year in Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. Right. we'll say. <laughs> Come on down and visit me. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. So nothing profound. Um, <laughs> I know. Uh, for TV then show. Then shut up. No. <laughs> uh, done. Uh, <laughs> For TV show, Netflix has uh, the second season of Blown Away. It oh, is I a uh, one. It doesn't matter. It's a glass blowing competition. We oh. burn through them oh. all. No pun intended. Um, oh, I've transitioned cool. from my day job uh, to working in house, working at home. I, I'm very thankful that I am working. <laughs> uh, and. Um, I'm here 24 hours a day and I, I still have no time to do my jewelry. So I know that's, uh, it's my fault. It's my effing fault that I'm not making stuff. And that's, that's about it. <laughs> I figured that out after all these years that it's my own damn fault if I'm not making something. <laughs> At least you don't have to worry about the storage like I do. I mean, I, in a way, I'm sort of grateful productive the whole time because I wouldn't, you know, 
<laughs> I'd have to hire a storage room. Right. Yeah, like like Joanne. So yes. much stuff. I put it all outside, remember. <laughs> I saw it on the link. The clay, I mean, I can't tell you how many um, planters I've lost that stayed outside in the winter. Well, because of the dirt. Yeah. Yep, they all cracked. I'd just like to say that having a studio, having a, either my, I'm lucky I have a studio over a place that has human beings walking around, you know, the, co the coffee shop. And it's so nice. Um, and then they come up to my studio. This woman opens my, what is wrong with people? You know, they, they just open my door and walk in. No knocking? I know people, don't, I'm, I'm getting Tourette's, I can feel it. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, they just, oh, this woman opens my, they think, they think if you're an artist with your art hanging that you're some sort of store or something. And my door was closed and she opens the door. She says, are you open? And I went, no. <laughs> and I said, no, because she didn't knock. But, you know, and then um, anyway, but it's <laughs> nice to be up there. I thank God I have that studio. If I, you know, even like if you have your dedicated room or your place, you know, to go, to have a place to go, not everybody has that. I know. People are going out of their minds. Oh, yeah. Maureen, you need to have an enter sign on your door. <laughs> I, I have she a said, sign that says that's, something like, please knock. Say it's hello. not open studios week. It's yeah. there. It says, please knock, right where your hand goes to the knob. But, you know, really? people. Oh, my God. Well, well um, yeah. I will say that's one of the nice things about Chapel Hill is that when we go for walks, um, and except for, no, even today, we run into people we know, so we get to socialize. Six yeah. feet away with masks on. I, uh, I saw you and Rick down by the river and you were, so, everybody's so like this. We, it's like, yeah. I know you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you had the experience of someone saying hello to you and you're not knowing who they were because of the mask. Right. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know people's like, coats. You know? <laughs> the nice the nice thing about that is if you're bad with names, you can say, I can't quite tell, who are you? And then they have to tell you their name again. And it's wonderful if it's somebody that you've known for years, but you forgot, forgot their name. Well, the, uh, the other thing that's happened is that all the people who couldn't get to the hairdresser and get their color done, <laughs> like they're wearing a mask and you see them and you don't know who they are because they're I, red, right? <laughs> I won't mention names here, but it has happened. <laughs> I, I've been saying honey for like 10 years now. So, you know, everybody's honey. Hi, honey, you know. I, <laughs> it, that's hey, a benefit to getting older. Dude. Maureen, I always thought it was special when you called me honey. Oh. <laughs> hey, you? Lawrence. Lawrence. You it is. I saw, Lawrence, I saw your... Uh, I'm like depressed. I'm trying to compliment somebody. <laughs> Lawrence, I, I saw the Americans at Home show. Mwah. Thank Gotcha. You. Excellent. It is a good show. Nice. Yeah. And which yeah. it was by a library, but it had like background music and it was oh, really they... smooth. It was a really Mayapak nice show. One? Mayapak? Yeah, yeah, the Mayapak Library. That that is top notch. That yeah, is, um, I have to look at it. The person who coordinates that, it, her name is Debbie. Debbie Feynman, she does yeah. an job. And she's married to Jim Stark. Yes, she's married to Jim Stark. Stark. And you know, she, they oh, have a virtual, yeah. they have a um, open call show generally in uh, September and February, or January, February. It's, oh, they have, some, they've had some great shows up there. Yeah, I think she, Taylor's been in a couple with the, the one you're in there. was really well done. Well, thank Great. you. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a look at it. She's also very receptive to uh, I want to say to Lawrence too, I showed it to my mother and didn't tell her anybody's art. And when yours came up, she was like, oh, I love that. <laughs> wow, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Um, I just want to say about the shows on, on to watch, there's a fantastic show called um, Grand Design on Netflix. Has anybody heard of it? No. Yes. Oh, have you, who I said yes? I, yes, yeah, I've, I've watched it. it. 
Isn't this fantastic? It's, it's yeah. great. Uh, okay, also, my octopus teacher. Oh, I have the name of it. Oh, oh, I heard that one. Cry. I haven't been able oh. to get to watch that with me. I heard you cry a lot, though. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. I cry. Is it on Netflix? Yeah, uh, Netflix or Hulu? Something to on, uh, on Hulu? Yeah. I think Either Netflix a... or Hulu. I get the two mixed up. My oh. Netflix. How about my octopus teacher? I have to look for that. How about my octopus octopus it's, not it's amazing. Good. Did you well, like, pretend it's a city? Say With, again. Uh, oh, that that's very good too. Yeah, the photographer. What's her name? Annie Leibovitz. Yeah. No. Annie oh, 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 that was good. Yes, yeah. I want to see that. Is yeah. that oh, that's feature a series? Or yeah, it's a couple of them. The yeah. documentary. Yeah, Martin Scorsese uh, interviewed her. She's very funny. Very funny. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. about New York City from the Fran Leibowitz. That's it, Fran Leibowitz. Fran Leibowitz. Oh, Famous yeah. portrait I photographer. Yeah. Well, rock and okay. rock stars and stuff. Yeah. Yep. I used to work at that place, Max's <laughs> Kansas City. Really? Yeah, really? 1978. Woo. You must have oh, some early. stories. 1971. <laughs> I was 20 and 21 years old. Oh, that's just now we can do it. Patty Smith made a pass, pass at me. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> Patty Smith. <laughs> uh, I wasn't interested because I already had a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And Bruce Springsteen made a pass at me, and he wasn't famous yet. I told him to go f himself. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what? You missed your chance, girls. <laughs> There's funny. a Maplethorpe film then that you should see. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well now where? It's it's um you know it's about his life, but it's a movie, so it's based on. Roommates. But it's on his relationship with Patty Smith and. Yeah. They were roommates back in yeah. the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I they read that book. Roommates. They were partners in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. She wrote a book about the, that whole scene in the Chelsea Hotel and all right. that stuff. It starts with that whole thing. We were only kids right. or something. I think we were only kids. I think yeah, something title, like that. Something yeah, like yeah. That. No. We read it in one of the book groups that I organized. The Year of the Monkey? No. <laughs> <laughs> all these great people that came from Jersey. They're all from Jersey. Oh, Maureen's actual house. I thought that was a fake background. I like the bookshelf, Maureen. Maureen, <laughs> tell us about your bookshelf. Yes. <laughs> That's nice. It's a fabulous bookshelf. Uh, <laughs> this one you're talking about. Yes. Just kids. Just kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just kids. Just kids. Just kids. Yeah. Close. Okay. So. Yes, um, Robin. Robin. What? Robin. Did did John Shearer from Hops on the Hudson get in touch with you? He did a while ago. Why? Because they're doing a um, craft fair, a, a curated craft fair in the in May. And he said he was looking to partner with, uh, he's partnering with a bunch of the different artist groups in the area. And so I gave him your name. As to yeah, he talk and I had, I mean, I was supposed to be in the one that didn't happen last year. Right, no, 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 but um, for the PAA. Right. How recently to... was that? I spoke to him like two days ago. Okay, yeah, no, no, he hasn't no, called yet. Was a much so early... be on the lookout for him. Okay. I would like right. info on that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna um, just, I'm gonna move on a little bit. We have a few more things and um, I don't know about you, but I'm DVRing all my news shows. <laughs> um, One of the things that people, I don't remember who it was that said, Christine, you said about not knowing how to promote yourself. So one of the um, questions we had was whether people would be interested in a workshop that Elisa has volunteered to do on uh, using social media to promote yourself and your heart and your art. <laughs> art, and your heart. art, yes. Master that too. <laughs> I like to promote my heart. <laughs> you no, know, you don't need to like sign up now. But if it's some, it's something to think about, and if you're interested, we can pursue it. I thought it might be a good panel idea, Rob. Panel with some people who really have 
Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like even online channel, like, yes, or, like, like everything has to be online. What is that? Child? Sounds like a kid. A oh, helium sound system. Helium. Is that the iPad? The iPad person that we don't know who is? Muted. Who is the iPad? They're muted. It was me, but it's turned off a long time ago. I was trying to actually attend two meetings at once. <laughs> I had one headphone in that and one headphone, but it didn't work. So you got my attention. Oh, <laughs> got it. So um, you're an honorable lady. <laughs> anyway, so that's, I mean, this meeting's being recorded so other people will have a chance to respond as well, but um now you tell me yes yeah, <laughs> i forgot the first 20 minutes or so i had paused it for the initial kibitzing and then i forgot to turn it back on until about 20 minutes in so whatever it happened oh. um can i ask uh, um alicia uh, alicia I, I, did you do this sort of thing for the chamber a couple times uh, for, for social networking uh, tips and stuff? The Mount Kisco Chamber. Oh, yeah. I did. Is that, is that so you, you, you're you like a, an not you know about these things and can He's teach amazing. them? <laughs> amazing. Well, I do it for my business. I have a real estate company, so I've been involved in marketing for probably about the last 10 years. Fantastic. So. I thought I met you at the chamber, though. You, you might have because I'm a member of that chamber too. Yeah, I don't. I don't do the social media for them. No, no, that, that's. I know who that is. Well, then, yeah. I mean, you know, letting us know that you that you're a, ma a maven. You know, that's good to know, and I'm, I'll come. I have some information I'll that come. I can share, which would be helpful. So, if we want, we can set up a workshop and um, just go through some basics. Very simple, um, you know, uh, a very simple slide deck. And then we can take it from there. That's kind of what I said to the chamber. Whoever's interested, then we can take this to another, you know, another course or a series of courses. But the, the first one would just be an introductory thing um, and kind of like finding out what everybody has, what they don't, what they don't have, what they need, what they want um, and, and what they want to do. So I can help with that. Lisa, I don't know if you could help somebody who is totally ignorant in, in technology. That like would me. be me. That's sure. I'm next. Sure. <laughs> I can certainly help you guys out. Well, how do I get that to be great. followers on Instagram? What? what? I said, how do you get to a thousand followers on Instagram without spending money? That's it. I'm promoting. Instagram. I will tell you that Instagram has so many things that you can do there. Uh, it's almost impossible to learn them all because they are changing constantly. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with, with a lot of these uh, social channels. They're constantly changing uh, the way it looks, the way it functions. So um, I would say start with the basics, but we, we can go over something like that, Lawrence. Um, that, would, that would be great. Yeah, yeah you know. It, get on Instagram. Exactly, that too. Okay. <laughs> Pretty basic. And, and they talk about <laughs> handles and hashtags and the yeah, hashtag yeah. and the hashtag. And I'm like, oi. It yeah. doesn't have to be that overwhelming or complicated. It, there can be very simple things done. Uh, and uh, I find that, you know, new users and people that have a little bit of um, trepidation about using social media or technology. Uh, you know, we will just go over some basics that will make it simple for you. Lily, you wanted to say something. Add on to, I think, where we are as a civilization at this point. I'm not, I'm not going to get too out of here, but I've actually avoided a lot of social media over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I sort of built up my own uh, body of work, my own sort of inventory website, because I didn't want to manage all of the cacophony that came in with responses and this and that. And I'm still at that point. I'm still reticent mm -hmm. to even go into the RC and the Instagram and the, you know, yeah. I yeah. think that I manage 
But these other sites, I have trepidation about what kind of noise am I going to let into yes. my life all of a sudden I can't manage it. That is so true, Will, because that's what a lot of people are experiencing. They don't really want the inundation that a social uh, conversation can have. Uh, however, if you do want to be promoted, you can do it and you don't, you can kind of block out the noise and just do what you have to do and put out there, you know, why you do your art. And it doesn't have to be every day, five times a day, but it can be consistent and frequent to whatever you are comfortable with. Uh, but, you know, pe people are there. Um, some people exploit it and some people use it for good. So, you know, you have to kind of go with the people and, and the, the kind of people that you will attract will be mostly like you. So, you know, people are, and a lot of artists are, do not want to put any of their artwork. I mean, I know some very famous artists that are not on social media because I don't have to be. But if you want to get your name out there and your mission out there, uh, you know, especially if you do have a mission, uh, you know, you, you want to communicate it with some type of audience. Yeah, my only response to that is I'm sitting next to the person I want to attract. <laughs> and that's good. Mission okay. accomplished. Right. <laughs> no social channels necessary. Right now. And it's so time consuming because the time you could be working on your art You've got to do all this. And plus just taking photographs and sizing your photographs and then you send the photographs out and then somebody wants a picture and it's got to resize that. And then by the time you do Instagram, oh, you're not making, you can't make any artwork. Hmm. Even if you're working full time on your art. It does take a little time, but it doesn't have to be that overwhelming. And you don't have to do it. That's the beauty of it. And you, you can do like- You don't have to three or four things at once, like on your um, MailChimp, there's an option to do, send your email and Instagram tweet and everything all at once. Okay. All right. And, and you don't have to do it all. You can just do two things. If you, you know, choose to use Instagram and Facebook, that's great, but you don't have to do everything. Right. But I will give you some tips about, you know, websites and other resources that you know are aside from social media that's another thing the website I know, it's a lot yeah, it is but, i mean i'm friends with a, i mean i'm following and i have about 160 followers which is perfect for me because i like to see what other people are doing and then they see what i'm mm -hmm. doing and it's just a nice small group yeah right okay but so I'm, Getting a lot of followers, what, why would somebody want to have a lot of followers? Because half of them are just bots anyway, right? Um, bots. Not necessarily. Right. That's so well, are there other kinds of things people would like to see? Any, any other kinds of programs or workshops that um, we should be thinking about hmm. that would be helpful? I would like to see more stuffed animals like Jennifer's. This one, wait, wait, this is, here's the moose. Oh, awesome. <laughs> this, this is the spruce. This is a spruce. I like the octopus. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. This is a spruce. Mm. A spruce is a moose and a squirrel hybrid. Oh, <laughs> did you make it? No, I did not. It was the mascot for this year's um, Gish, which is the Great International Scavenger Hunt. The mascot this year was the the spruce, and so this is my spruce. That is crazy. And, and Beth has one. Yeah, come on, Beth. Where's that little dog? This is Blossom's new puppy. Aww. And it's actually, she's begun the unstuffing process. She has a couple Aww. of openings <laughs> everywhere. Of yeah. And I just restuffed the hole as the stuff comes out to make mm -hmm. it last longer. <laughs> I'm just looking to see if my, my stuffed animal is anywhere. <laughs> this is <laughs> which is uh, you know, very close to being extinct. <laughs> 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 Robin, where's your cat? That's what I just said. I'm wondering where she is. 
This is Johnny. <laughs> Julie Vaughn, are you? Oh, there's Larry's, Larry's there. got. Oh. Larry's got a very lifelike looking. That's very yeah. lifelike. <laughs> oh, oh, kitty! Oh my God, it's beautiful. Oh, I don't have a I want to see it. I can't oh. see it. Larry, where are you? But she's alive. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's Renee. Look at Renee. Renee. I have a brontosaurus that my mother made me when I was like five. It needs a little help. Oh. My little sweet. Well, this is the answer to all the mental health issues that all of us have. Yeah. There you go. Oh, look at Robin's baby. I love it. Oh. Emmy. Where's Larry? Larry has a baby also? A nice dog, did he? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, she she's not happy. She was napping on there the couch. She that is. Looks beautiful. Beautiful. I don't see Larry. I don't know why. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> so comfortable on the couch, and I disturbed her. Aw. Uh, <laughs> hey, so this so thing about having so stuff so on her, so they don't bother. <laughs> we'll take a nap oh, to she's so oh, Look at the doggy. Oh. You know what? I, I watch <laughs> Channel 13. Um, you know, news hour every night, and I can't wait to see their pets in the background. Yes, I agree. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, there's a tuxedo cat. I think it's Lisa's cat. It's uh, Deja Lisa Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Brzezinski on um, on HBO. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Instagram because she's got she has about five animals and they're all adorable. Wow, who's that? Who? Pika Brzezinski. Uh, oh, oh, really? How interesting. So, okay, um, I'm just going to move on again. Um, <laughs> Inez went to bed. I know. Okay. Lucky. I, I can't imagine going to bed this early. Um, so, you know, those of you who haven't come to studio visits, I really encourage you to because they've really been fun. Um, they've been a nice way to get to know people, get to know people's work. Um, I've been able to, I finally figured out the technology. I missed a couple of people, but I finally figured out the technology and most of them, the past ones, uh, with apologies to Debbie and Karen Allen, who were early in this routine. Um, I posted on YouTube and the link to it is on our, our homepage on the PAA website. And, um, we have are always looking for volunteers to host the studio visit. So if it's something you think you'd like to do at some point, that would be wonderful. You just need to let me know. Because I didn't have anyone lined up, I am gonna do the one on February 18th. Um, you'll have to bear with me. Um, and I talked Joanne Zawalski into doing March mm -hmm. and Robin Orst into doing April. So those Ooh. should all be fun. And I have to wait until I'm not under construction anymore and I have a studio again. Okay. Right now I just have a dining room table. I think Hillary wants to volunteer at some point. <laughs> you have to unmute. You're unmute. Unmute. I've been thinking about volunteering. <laughs> you I should. Do the morning because I have my two weird avenues of work. One that's like heavy and one that's light. So choose one or do a little of both. Look, talk about weird avenues. I've got my sculpt, my more sculptural work, and I've got you know bowls and mugs. That yeah. no, you know, um, you just figure out what you want to share with people and how to talk about it. Yeah, well, I would do one. Okay, so I, we're already booked uh, until April, right? Um, we're booked through a, through April, but we'll pick a date. Okay. In May. Huh? Well, like the third Thursday in May. I'll do May. Great, wonderful. That gives me time to think about it. Good, good, that'll be fun. Okay. And remember that about half the time is taken up often with people doing questions. Yeah. So you only have to prepare a, a 25 minute presentation or even Not a 20 even. minute. 20 My minute. My for Rick was 10 minutes at least. <laughs> oh, it'll be it'll be quick. No, I I it it'll be fun. I do. I'm gonna show both. Great. There's okay. different. They're in the same medium, but they're um very different subject matter. Okay. 
Lawrence, you wanted to talk about Harriet Tubman? If you like. Uh, as probably, hopefully, all of you know, there's a beautiful Harriet Tubman statue in Peekskill. Yeah. And it's going to be in Peekskill through the end of February. Uh, coincides with Black History Month. It was designed by Wesley Wolford. He's an artist from North Carolina. And if you look at his website, you'll see that he's actually won an Academy Award and an Emmy for wow. costume design, or not, not costume design, but like prosthetics that you put on actors to make them look different. Ah. So he's a, he's a very talented sculptor. His website is chock full of beautiful sculptures. So, where is this now? It's in Peekskill. Yeah, it's in it's uh, right across from the Hirsch building. What Do you is know it? where the Hirsch building is? By the gazebo. The By corner the gazebo, of Clark Central and North Division. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Next to the parking lot where we do the truck stop gallery. It's, it's called, Journey, it called? To, Journey to Freedom is the name of the sculpture. But I mean the gallery or whatever. It's not it's a gallery, it's street art. Outside. It's oh, public it's an art. outside sculpture. Oh. Near yes, the gazebo. It's public art. Oh, wow. You, it's across the street. You can walk street. to it, walk past it. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Is, is really there is. any way that Peekskill could purchase that? Purchase. Uh, I don't on tour. know. I, I've heard that there is some consideration for that, but um, that's really something the city government and the bid would have to work on. Obviously, yeah. we don't have the money for that. I mean, we've got isn't that, isn't it a that traveling design. sculpture? Isn't it? It on is its a traveling way? sculpture. It's going different places. Before it came here, it was in Poughkeepsie. Mm -hmm. It was in Newburgh most recently. That's yeah. it, Newburgh. It's on, it's on tour, and the tour is going to continue. Yeah. There, there is a website that's set up. There's workshops that are going on. There are talks that are happening with um, uh, descendants of Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. that are that are coming up and there's been workshops that have taken place um and that they're all recorded they should be on the on the website peak skill harriet tubman peak skill or something yeah. like that I can't hold on larry exactly. i have that right here yeah well years it's ago Har it's harriet tubman peak skill.com there you go harriet tubman yeah. peak skill is one word well there were rumors that she came through in peak skill because when i did follow the drinking gourd Right. The musical I docudrama believe, years ago. I believe it's actually the research. Historic yeah, fact she was included in in the uh, the show. I believe it's historical fact that she came through Peekskill, but I couldn't. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But the uh, yeah, so what's her it's fern from the fern gallery would know for sure because she runs a tour about the Underground Railroad and she would know uh, yeah. Harriet uh, Tubman's actual connections to Peekskill. Yeah, there was a whole scene in that she was included in. Mm hmm. So. <laughs> Yep. So I've just uh, mentioned to the board today <laughs> that the Peekskill Arts Alliance yeah, would have some kind of ceremony to honor the statue. Uh, one, because it's Harriet Tubman, who's a great American, and two, because it's uh, public art out in the public space. And uh, so obviously uh, we have some work to do. The board has to sit down and decide if we're going to do something. And and what to do. I mean, with COVID, you're kind of limited in what you can do. But it's we'd like to like to try and organize something to honor Harry Tubman and to recognize art in public spaces. Right. So I if we do, if yeah, we do have it. something and we, and we try to make it public, hopefully some of you will show up. And if we do do something and we make it online, hopefully you'll watch it. The twenty dollar bills in the future, Harry. It's okay. Yeah, for not for a while, but it is coming. Um, so does that cover it all, Robin? Is there anything? Yeah, else? I think so. I think that um, the the Peak Scale NAACP is doing. There's a couple of events. I think uh, Ocean more Ocean actually has an event scheduled. Oh. But I did, but it had no details on what his event is going to entail. Okay. You mean in Peak Scale? Yeah. I have a show coming up um, in July, but not in Peekskill. Oh, does it relate to Harry Tubman? State. State. They've had dance performances in front of the statue. I saw one. It was beautiful. So, yeah. And then they record it, though, so it, then it's online. Right. Yeah, but I saw it, and it was beautiful. Does anyone um, have a show coming up in the next couple of months that they'd like to tell everyone about? Or Well, I, I'm very... 
excited about um, I'm going to be in a museum in Cooperstown. Whoa, nice. Animore Art Museum. I'm going to have a solo show there. Whoa. Wow, nice. that's oh, pretty cool. Very exciting. The end of July. Yeah. Very Congratulations. Nice. Thank you. Is that by your house? Well, it's about 40 minutes from my, we have a place up there. And about 40 minutes from there. That's real. That's wonderful news. That's, yeah. that's big time. Good for you. Yeah, I'm very, it's very exciting. I, I'm submitting a piece to the Arts Westchester. So this is my first time submitting to an actual art show. So I'm a little excited about that, but it hasn't been, hasn't been um, curated yet. So I don't know if I'm in, but I'm submitting. Hey. Good start. That's a step. Yeah. And, and never be discouraged if you don't make it. I, there are stories of writers that I can certainly tell you as an artist, I have papers of rejection letters and I've never let them <laughs> calm me down. Well, they're doing a whole thing. It's like art inspired by the pandemic. And I did that whole pen, that whole quilt made of scraps from the masks. So I figured that was an absolute wow. perfect fit. So I'm submitting, we'll see how it goes. Good luck. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah talk about um, the masks because I recycle almost everything in my house that I can between the plastics and the papers and stuff. What do you do with the masks? I don't use paper. You know, like the ones that are, um, the, the cloth, because I say the, the, the ones that have the, well, between the N95s and the ones that have the three pleated and four pleated, you know, surfaces. I, the cloth and I said, you know, like cloth? maybe put that into artwork or do something with it. Make a flag, I, I, mean, I don't it gets, know. Does it, I mean, does it get, there, Make, paper make recycle? Quilts. Does it go? What's that? I if said you're make a quilt, they get quilts out of the cloth ones. Actually, I saw a cartoon today um, oh, that was a rat coming into this nest with all these other rats lying in upside down masks. <laughs> talking about how there were all these great free hammocks around town. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Or it could be a bikini for a Barbie doll. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know about a Barbie doll. They're this big. Yeah. <laughs> a mask would be a dress. <laughs> it's got to be a, bit, a bigger doll. A 60s bikini. <laughs> bikini they for were... you Chatty Cathy? <laughs> One of those blow up dolls. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get bikinis. Let's not go blow up dolls. They don't even have to wear anything, actually. Right? <laughs> Just a surprised look. That's all they need to wear. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's time to end the meeting. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I, the meeting. Yeah, I haven't had my tea yet. Maureen has something. I haven't had my dinner. I'm Break not sure what's going on in five minutes. <laughs> Who's behind you, Maureen? Hi. I I wanted to say that I um I'm having a show. I was supposed to have a show at the, the Croton Library, but due to the pandemic. So I'm gonna be doing, um, I have many more portraits, you know, cause I do my Shiro's and Hero series and uh, that's continuing and I'll, I'll be there in April. But I wanted you to know that during the pandemic, I, Good luck with it. I submitted this painting behind me and another one for a woman uh, celebrating the hundred year, um, right to vote, you know, the 19th Amendment up in Poughkeepsie, the, there were like eight different galleries open. Um, and uh, I sold this piece. Nice. And oh, um, which, which is called, called Mourn, you know, and when Larry was talking about, you know, just how painful what? this whole, this whole four years has been, um, this is about empathy, you know, this, and this woman totally got it. It was one of the first times that I've had like this incredible exchange back and forth through my uh, Facebook uh, Winsick art page. She was talking back and forth that it, it was, it's the most incredible exchange, you know, she, cause she said, you know, when I was thinking about, it was called power. And I submitted this because the power to have empathy helps us to process and she got it and not only that she bought it <laughs> <laughs> really got it 
literally got it. Yeah. At least we have a president who has some empathy. Right. Well, well, now we do. Yeah. And so my new patient. Making some has. progress. Yeah. Well, yeah. Robin, I wanted to make a comment at this point. Uh, we're, and we're talking collectively about what we're doing currently and what we're doing next, as well as what we're doing as a group. Um, I don't know how many people are on this call who know Brian Caniglio, the jazz guitarist. Um, so he's, he's become a very good friend, and I'm doing uh, my next piece. It's on my ping pong table now. Um, but it's a chart of all the different... <laughs> Mind barking. That's great. <laughs> I'm sorry. She has such a big Is it in tune? That will. Okay. Well, someone gets it. <laughs> I'm making this piece for Brian because he's a sweet, sweet. But it's also about making, and this is back to what Larry said. I'm just doing it for no good reason whatsoever. He's just doing it for art. Um, so if anyone knows what, if, ever, if anyone knows Brian, do not tell him I'm going to be giving him his own special gift. But that's the next project. Like, you know, totally just to stay connected. It's the art yeah. and the heart. The art and the heart. Right. And the bar. Plus, Will is uh, Will's going to be in the next show at Tompkins Corners called Driven to Abstraction. And that opens March 1st. Nice. Yay. I have a show. Folks, I got to go. I'm going to head out. Good to have see everybody. Day. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Till the yeah. next time. Bye, you too. Take care. Bye, Lolly. Good night. Bye, everybody. Good night, Good night. See everyone. Bye, bye, Lolly. Thank you, Robin. Bye. 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 I'm going to do the same. OK. Bye. Bye. For those who Bye. didn't see the Hillary's doing May twentieth. We're all good. Okay. Hey, good enjoy and you have a show. Oh, I have a show coming up in May in June at the Maypack Library with two other artists, um, and the show is called Conversations. And the show is uh, with uh, Sharon Nakasati and um, Georgine Hanahan. Bye. Uh, oh, great. This show was supposed to be last year in September, but because of COVID, it was extended to uh, ju uh, June. And we, it is, um, you know, we'll show our own work, but throughout the pan, throughout this past year, we've been uh, sending work through the mail. Uh, we, one of us will generate something and then we mail it to someone else and they add to the piece. Oh, and then love they it. mail it to someone else and they, uh, and, and it keeps getting mailed until it, it's finished. Um, and uh, which has been really absolutely wonderful to work on with the with them. Uh, great problem solving and, and a great way to have conversations. And so those pieces will also be shown too, besides our own. Is there a, oh, whose is dog is that? No, me. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna mute. Yeah, put yourself on mute. Is there a name for that step-by-step uh, -step thing, Joanne? Um, well, I don't it's know. Like a progressive uh, dinner. <laughs> I, I do have, uh, if you go on Instagram, I mean, if you go, yeah, Insta I have seen uh, mail art or something like that. Oh. But, um, oh, it's oh. similar in a, the Surrealists used to do stuff like that. Where yeah. they there's there's the poetry like, exercise called um, Exquisite Corpse. Yes. That's yes. Somebody would somebody would write a line of poetry yeah. and then cover it and then you'd write another line yeah. and so on and so forth. Well, Surrealists used to do that with art it's also. Similar. It's sim it's a visual similar to that. It's, it's yeah. a, good luck with it. I've got to awesome. go. But good luck, Joanne. Thank you. Thank you. We're, I'm I'm encouraging them from uh, to try to see if we can have that show because we don't know uh, it. It'll probably be up. I'm not positive yet if it'll be up, but I'm hoping that we'll do both virtual and uh, in person. There's there's a whole movement called mail art. Yes, yes. And, and uh, Marilyn Rosenberg, who is a member of the PAA, has done a tremendous amount of mail art. 
Hmm. As well, well as book art. But generally, male art is between two people. This is between three of us. So that's part of yeah, why well, she, she's right. done it with different two people here and there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been a, it's been wonderful, and the results are. Um, we ended with it was, you know, it was funny because some pieces were very small, so they were easy to mail, and other pieces are really large, so we have to go around and find envelopes and everything. But we've also started doing um, sculptural pieces. Wow! Cool. So it, it's really it's really wonderful. It's it's a lot of. Uh, and one artist uses multimedia and the other artist uses watercolor and I use uh, whatever I can find. You know, whatever. <laughs> it's really multimedia yeah. now. So, so yeah, it's really, and there, it's all, it's all different. As a matter of fact, we just had a, a Zoom meet. It helps with our conversation. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Hey, I gotta go, bye. Thank you. Bye, good bye. Night. Nice to see everyone. Good night, thank you, Robin. You're welcome, good night. Thank you. It was, it was rich and wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for sharing everything. It was wonderful. Good night, Bye. everyone. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.